Hi everybody. Well, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. I am so glad that you are here today joining us in our circle. And I want you to know that I'm praying for you, that God would use these lessons to grow you, to mature you, and especially draw you closer to God. Well, we always start our lessons off with something to gather. That includes gathering, if you're a kid, gather your parents or your caretakers, your guardians, gather them to watch this with you so that they can learn with you as the body of Christ. And I also have another thing for you to gather. Actually, there are three things. I don't know if you can get all three. You, maybe you can, maybe you can't. If you can get even one of them, send me a photo, I'd love to see. If you can get all three, I will be super impressed. Okay, the first thing is our lambs are back. Remember last week and I said when we talked about Jeremiah, the prophet, and how he prophesied about the sheep and how the good shepherd will return? Well, this week we are talking about Ezekiel, the prophet, and he says something about the sheep as well. So if you have sheep in your home, I would love for you to gather your sheep. We have some of them right here with us. You can gather your sheep. Another thing is if you have any hearts at home, heart-shaped items at home, I would love for you to gather some hearts. And then the other thing that I would love for you to gather, do you happen to have any bones at home? I don't know. Do you have bones at home? And I'm not talking about like the ones inside of you. I mean, those are the kind of bones I'm talking about, but not those. Like, do you have bones? Let me see. You might have something like this, bones. A tooth just fell out of this one. Do you have bones at home? I would love for you to gather some bones and I am going to give you that opportunity to do that right, oh wait, not right now. Remember, your family members, maybe your friends, sheep, hearts, and bones, and press pause now. magic you guys are back and you guys always come back and i love what you bring to our circle it's so fun and i love receiving pictures of what you bring sometimes what you bring are your kitty cats or your dogs and i love that too um, did you bring sheep and hearts and bones and did you bring your parents with you or your caregivers or your siblings maybe well, I like to start off actually by talking about bones here uh, that we're going to be using in our lesson for today. And I don't know, some of you may think that it's kind of scary to look at bones. Does anyone, anyone think it's a little scary maybe to look at bones? Well, when I think about bones, I love bones. I remember when I was about four years old, and I got to take this class called Body and Bones, and I learned all the names for the bones in the body when I was little. So I just love learning about bones because um, it's so fascinating how God made us. Every time I learn about the body, I, I, I'm in awe of the creative power that God has in making us. So when I think about bones, I'm not scared. I, I love learning about bones in the body. I'll put that there and this missing tooth. Oh wait, two teeth fell out, guys. Whoa, I think I'm gonna need to glue these back in. Have you ever seen teeth before? What teeth look like? These will go right here. I'll put them in the basket. But I have some other bones that I wanna show you too that we brought for this lesson. And they, they have to do with our lesson today. These bones are so cool. These bones we found in our yard. They're old bones. And I wonder if you can tell what part of the body these came from. And these are not from a human, just so you know. Can you first guess maybe the animal that these came from? And then 
maybe what parts of the body they came from. I'm not sure they all came from the same animal. Do you know what this part is? This part is the scapula. That's your shoulder blade right back here. So when I see bones, I am impressed and amazed at how God has made us. Here's another little skeleton we have. I wonder if you have seen any bones lately out maybe for decorations outside. And I wonder how you feel when you see those. Well, one exciting thing is that this Sunday, this week, is November 1st, and we celebrate something called All Saints Day. All Saints Day, we remember all of the people who have gone before us, all the saints. And in the Anglican tradition, we have a prayer that we pray on that day, on November 1st. Um, some of these are big words, but I'm still going to pray this anyhow. And this prayer, look for words about the saints. Saints are all those people, you and me. And saints are those that love God and God loves them. And they follow, they follow God. Let's go ahead and pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son. Give us grace to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Now, there were a couple big words in there. There was one big word that's ineffable, and ineffable means that you can't explain it. And it's so big. It's so, so big. And we just pray that we would be able to follow all the people that have gone before us and that are not in this physical world anymore, but they are with God. I wonder how we can follow them. It says in all virtuous and godly living. I wonder if there's someone that you know that has died, that you remember that person really loved God a lot, and you miss that person, and you looked up to that person. And I wonder if you don't know any people that are like that. I wonder if you could ask your parents or you could ask your caretaker who's with you, a grown-up. And I bet they'll be able to tell you about someone who has died who really loved God a lot. Today's a good day to remember those people and try to follow them. Well, we are going to look at our calendar. As I said, this week is no, it's November 1st, and we are in the 22nd week after Pentecost. Should I count by twos? Should I? Okay, I'm going to count by twos all the way there. Two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, here's 21 and 22. Wow, guys, we have made it so far. We only have three more weeks left of this church year, and then we begin at Advent. We have gone really far this year has been a really long year. Well, let's go ahead and light our calendar, or I almost said again, light our calendar. I've said that in other videos too. I don't know why. Candle and calendar. 
let's go ahead and light our candle right now. And this candle reminds us of Christ our King. And the fire also reminds us that Christ is our high priest who sacrificed himself for us. And this fall, we're learning about prophets. So we remember that Christ is the ultimate prophet. So Christ, our king, Christ, our great high priest and prophet, Christ, our good shepherd, we welcome you today. And we ask that you would help us to follow you, follow your ways, to follow what your will is and what's on your heart. God, help us to also follow those saints that loved you and they still love you. Lord, we pray that you would give us good examples of people who love you and follow you. Amen. Oh, well, let's go ahead and get our hearts ready to receive this lesson. We are going to do that today by reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. He lets me lie down in fields of green grass. He leads me beside quiet waters. He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right paths for the honor of his name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. You are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff comfort me. You prepare a feast for me right in front of my enemies. You pour oil over my head. My cup runs over. I am sure that your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. With all the saints. Amen. Well, we have had a great opening today, and we're going to go ahead with our lesson. Today we are learning about Ezekiel. And Ezekiel was a prophet and his name means God's strength. But let's first go ahead and remember last week we learned about Jeremiah the prophet. And his name means Yahweh will raise. And we learned last week that Yahweh would raise the good shepherd, that Yahweh would raise a shoot out of the branch of Jesse or out of the branch of David, that, would, that this person would be king and a priest forever. And we also learned that God would put his law into our hearts. So let's go ahead and this lesson is one of the lessons I am going to read, actually. So today we think about how God's people, they have a, such a hard time sometimes following him. In the Old Testament, they had such a hard time. And today we're going to learn what God is going to do about this problem. You know, it's always, well, it's hard to follow God. It's, ha it's hard to follow all the time, loving God and loving others. It's hard to follow the will of God all the time. And it's hard to overcome our selfish desires, our sin, and to do the things that we need to do to give our entire being, our, to love the Lord our God with our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And today we're going to learn what God does to solve this problem. 
So we remember that. God had done so much for his people. He made them and he loved them. And he made big promises to them. Remember when he promised Abraham that he would have as many descendants as the stars of the sky and that through him all the world would be blessed. We remember that God rescued his people from the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And we remember that God gave them the law and he gave them the 10 best ways to live when they left Egypt. And we remember that God gave them a place a land, Israel, and his glory came, and it rested on the temple, and he blessed them in every way, and he was their God, and he loved them so, so much. They were his people. And God wanted to be with them always. But the people kept wandering away from God. They kept forgetting all about him. They kept running away from God and they stopped loving God. Their hearts were cold and sad. Even so, God's love for his people was unstoppable. God had a plan. Of course he did. He knew just what he needed to do to fix the problem of sin that was in the world. It was deep down inside of people's hearts ever since Adam and Eve first turned away from God. And God sent special, special messengers. They were prophets. And they were called to tell his people what he planned to do. God spoke to the prophets and he gave them his words. And the prophets delivered the messages to God's people. They gave messages of judgment. They gave messages of warning. They gave messages of hope. They gave messages of the Messiah, the Christ. And they gave messages of God's rescue plan. And Ezekiel, he was one of those prophets. And we remember his name means God's strength. He prophesied during the fall of Jerusalem and into the Babylonian captivity, the exile. And he was a prophet at the same time as the prophet Daniel, and we will learn about him next week. He also just began his prophesying just as Jeremiah and Habakkuk were finishing their time in prophesying. God gave Ezekiel things to say to the people, but the cool thing was he also gave Ezekiel pictures to help him understand his plan. And today we are going to talk about those pictures that God gave Ezekiel. So here is one of the pictures that God gave Ezekiel. I wonder what you think this picture looks like. And I wonder what God is promising 
his people in this picture. So I want you to listen. Listen to what God said through Ezekiel in this picture. The Lord put me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones, and the bones were very dry. The Lord asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Lord and King, you are the only one who knows. Then the Lord said to me, Speak into these bones. Tell them. Dry bones, listen to the Lord's message. He says, I will put breath in you. Then you will come to life again. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So as I spoke, just as the Lord commanded me to, as I was speaking, I heard a noise. It was a rattling sound. The bones t came together. One bone connected itself to another. I saw tendons and flesh appear on them. Skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then the Lord said to me, Speak to the breath. Tell it to come from all four directions. Go into these people who have been killed so they can live. So I spoke just as he commanded me to, and breath entered them. Then they came to life again. They stood on their feet. They were like a huge army. By this picture, God was promising his people who were dried up and had lost all hope that he would bring them back from death and he would put his spirit in them and give them new life. He would breathe life into these dry bones. He would cause them to live again. And it reminds us of how God breathed life into Adam. God had created Adam out of the dust of the earth. And when he was ready, God blew into the nostrils of Adam and he came alive. God wants to do this with his people, bring them back to life again so that they can follow him and love him and they can walk with each other just like God and Adam and Eve walked in the garden together. This was the promise that God gave that he would breathe his spirit into them. Here's another picture. And I wonder what you think this one looks like. I wonder what you think God is promising his people in this picture. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Let's go ahead and reread that passage. This is from Ezekiel 36. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone and I will give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. So God had promised to give us a new heart. Just like Jeremiah had prophesied that God would put his law into our hearts Well, I've got one last image here that God gave Ezekiel. Can you see that picture? What does that look like to you? What do you think God is promising his people in this picture? Let's find out. 
You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, declares the Sovereign Lord. Woe to the shepherds of Israel, who only take care of themselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with wool, and slaughter the choice of animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, or healed the sick, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays, or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered, because there was no shepherd. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places they were scattered. I myself will tend my sheep. I have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. The sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. I will place one shepherd over them. He will belong to the family line of my servant David. He will take good care of them. He will look after them. He will be their shepherd. Then they will know that I am with them. I am the Lord their God. What is God promising us in this picture? He says, you are my sheep and I am your shepherd. I will take care of you and I will bring you back and we will be together. You know, many people didn't understand these pictures, but a few were filled with hope. Remember, prophets give messages of hope. And they said, when will these wonderful things happen? And the prophets said, soon, very soon. They said that the Lord himself, the good shepherd, the giver of life, he is coming soon. And when he comes, your sins will be forgiven and your hearts will be made clean and you will be filled with his spirit. You will have to wait a just a little bit longer. Don't worry, he is coming soon. Don't worry, he is coming soon. God is going to put his spirit in us. He is going to forgive us and give us new life. The Lord himself, the good shepherd, the giver of life is coming soon, and when he comes, your sins will be forgiven and your hearts will be made clean, and you will be filled with the Spirit. God's people had to wait for the Lord to come fix their hearts, but we don't have to wait. We know that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, has come. And he is the giver of life. And we know that he has sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to help us, to live in our hearts, to tell us the right things, how to follow him and how to love him. He fixes our hearts and it's such a wonderful thing we are rescued from sin and we are made friends with God again. He has helped us follow him by giving us the good shepherd and by putting his spirit in us, which we receive at our baptism. 
And each week at communion, we remember how the Good Shepherd laid down his life for us so that we would no longer be lost sheep. God has put his law into our hearts, like Jeremiah and Ezekiel prophesied, so that we can love God more and know his will and love others and know that he loves us. Well, let's wonder about this lesson. I wonder which of these pictures you like best. And I wonder how God has helped his people to follow him. I wonder how God will change their hearts. And I wonder how God has changed your heart. I wonder if you have ever felt or known that the Holy Spirit, God, has breathed life into you. And I wonder what God did for you at your baptism. I wonder why God gave Jeremiah and Ezekiel such similar messages about the Good Shepherd and about our hearts. And I wonder if all the people will be glad when the Good Shepherd comes. I wonder how the Good Shepherd takes care of you. And I wonder what God the Father is telling us about himself in this lesson. I wonder where Christ the Good Shepherd is working in your life today. Remember, he is working in your life every day. Well, let's go ahead and talk about our work. I wonder how you have been doing with your Old Testament books of the Bible. Do you have them memorized yet? And I wonder if you ended up making the sheep project last week or what your work was last week that you did with the prophet Jeremiah. You know, this week you could read, um, the readings that these came from were from Ezekiel chapter 34, 36, and 37. And if you have a children's Bible, I wonder if these stories, any of them are in your children's Bible. If they are, I would love to see a picture of them. I always love seeing those pictures of the, what's in your children's Bible. Um, this week, maybe you can still continue to make these sheep. I'll, I'll continue to put that link in the description box again this week. Maybe you could have fun with food this week and have cauliflower. That always reminds me, they look like sheep. And you could remember the Good Shepherd when you have some cauliflower this week. This week, maybe you could remember your baptism. Remember and celebrate that day when the Holy Spirit came and he sprinkled you clean and put his spirit inside of you. And I wonder if this week you can listen for God's messengers in your life.
And perhaps you could draw a picture of one of these. I would so love to see that. Maybe of the bones or maybe of a new heart. Maybe of the Good Shepherd. I would love to see a drawing of that this week. Or maybe write a poem or a prayer. Or we do have songs, as always, in the description box below about the Good Shepherd and even songs about the bones and about a heart. So many songs about, about our lesson today. Well, let's go ahead and pray. All right. God, we thank you that we can know you. Lord, help us to follow you. We pray that we would be able to follow the Spirit's leading to love you and love others more. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you that as the Good Shepherd, you laid down your life for us. Amen. Guys, take a big, deep breath and... And as the smoke rises, let's remember how the Holy Spirit is in us and he works through us. So next week, we'll be learning about the prophet Daniel. That will be the last prophet that we learn about this fall. And I hope that you will join us then. So I do pray that God would bless you and that he would keep you, that he would make his face to shine upon you, that you would know that you are filled with his spirit to, to love him and to love others. Go now in peace. Bye.